Hold on a minute, that isn't my theme tune. It's Friday Night Rambles. Hello and welcome along. Um, Paul Robert isn't too well tonight, so uh, just wishing him all the best, all the very best of love. Get well soon, mate. Um, tonight, well, I'm not used to doing all this camera lark either. Uh, tonight I've got two guests in my position as sort of uh, kind of host, shall I say. I have children TV legends, Ronnie LeDrew and Malcolm Lord. So we're going to be chatting away all about... Hello, Ronnie. How are you? Hello. <laughs> Malcolm, hello. Good evening. I'm, hello, I'm used everybody. to having a microphone. I'm not used to all this TV luck. It's, uh... <laughs> well, you've got, gonna... you got... Your face is better for radio, I have to admit. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I, I thought he was talking about my right. face, but no, your face. <laughs> I need a big mask. I'm loving the mask, by the way, Ronnie. It's um, coming off because uh, I can't speak clearly with it on. But anyway, I thought it was quite fun at <laughs> the beginning. It was, it was <laughs> wonderful, isn't it? It really is. So you two together, mm -hmm. children, children's TV. I mean, this room, I mean, believe it or not, I know I'm filling in for Robert, but I'm a little bit older than him, only by a couple of weeks, I think it is. So, um, yeah, I grew up watching you on the TV in your different guises. In our guises. <laughs> <laughs> so it's actually quite strange to actually see you in, in person, shall I say. Well, I hope it's not a disappointment. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, not at all. <laughs> Far from. So, Malcolm, um, would, would you mind just uh, telling people how they might know you? Well, oh, because you haven't, I haven't got a clue like Ronnie, have I? I have, but I'll show it you later. Um, <laughs> I was fortunate enough to join the cast of Rainbow in, I think, 1981, I think, initially to uh, Puppeteer George, and then after a few years, the Stanley, who did Bungle, left. And so, um, I don't know, was it a promotion? I'm not sure. Uh, I, got, I was allowed to walk and talk at the same time. Oh, uh, so then I, became, yeah, nice. I then became uh, Bungle for the, uh, for the rest, of the rest of the series uh, at Thames. Mm -hmm. So I think Ronnie and, and Ron I, we were together, oh, crikey, for 13, 14 years on telly? At, at least, Until 93, yeah. was it? Yeah. Yeah, I think it was ninety three or ninety two or something. I, I'm hopeless with the 90, years. I'm ninety three was the last of the ninety three was ah, the last of the Thames. Thames, Thames. Right. Well, it's ninety three then. Yeah, excellent. Ninety three. Mm. God, I was, only, I, I was only five. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was only sixteen when I started. No, go on. That's <laughs> right. Here we go. <laughs> so, Ronnie, oh, you've dear. got one of the most iconic characters as well, who was known for his yeah. cheek. Very, I'm very, very lucky. Cheap. And I wasn't the first Zippy. In fact, a mentor of both Malcolm and I, um, the puppeteer originally who started the whole thing, was a lady called Violet Philpott. And we both yes. worked with her. I mean, she was like, I mean, she, she became our mother in a way. It's very funny. She's well, yes. mother. I think every one of our age worked for Violet at some point. Yeah. Uh, she, she spawned all these uh, puppeteers who went on, on to great things. And we sort yeah. of left her there, didn't we? Bless her. We did rather, <laughs> sadly. But she was great. I mean, she, um, I mean, I met her when I was uh, literally a, a boy, I mean, 14, 15, at this funny place called the Educational Puppetry Association, where her husband Ooh. and her were working there. I mean, Panto Pup was the fun, was um, stage name of A.R. Phil Pup. So we always called him Panto. And um, he, this place was a basement in Hoban, but it was basically um, a place where teachers could come along and learn how to make simple puppets, glove puppets mostly, and um, and then go into schools and use them as an educational aid, you know, that sort of thing. Um, and But Violet and Panta both did glove puppet shows. Violet particularly's shows was were, you know, well, they were absolutely brilliant. I mean, the one play I always remember is The Egg, about a little yeah, character. Yeah, <laughs> And we both, we did a bigger version. I'm running on a bit. 
we did big versions of it with Violet. You know, she uh, started her Cap and Bells puppet theatre company and we sort of joined. Well, I, I joined first, I think, as setting it all up, but then Malcolm certainly joined later. Well, it was, she actually gave me, it was my, I left, graduated from drama school on the Sunday and started with Violet on the Monday. There you so are. I got my first job, equity card, uh, I was away. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Well, anyway, then um, I, I suppose in the early 70s, I'll just give you a little bit of history. Um, the original producer of the programme was a lady called Pamela Lonsdale, and she turned up at the Little Angel Theatre, which is the theatre I sort of trained at as a, to learn all my sort of puppetry technique, and that's in Islington in North London. She turned up to about 1970, I would think it was, and at the, in the workshop, and she spoke to John Wright, the founder director, and said, look, I'm doing this television program. We've got to sort of do a new sort of Sesame Street because um, the English educationists say that Sesame Street, there's too much American words and the spellings are wrong, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, she was going to produce a preschool program similar to Sesame Street. Would, I, would John Wright be interested in making the puppets? So uh, John, at the time, the th he, he felt that that wasn't his cup of tea at all. But I was having some puppets made at the sort of other end of the workshop. And this is one of the puppets that was being made. Now, I don't know whether you can see it. I'm going to tilt it back a little bit. There you are. Now, he was, is called, we, I had a whole sort of lot of characters. He was called Grumble Bubble. And of course, you can see that he's got this great big zip across his mouth. Now, I like to think that the researcher, while John was talking to Pamela, was going along looking at all these various puppets and saw this puppet with a zip on his mouth and um, thought, oh, that's a good idea. We might use that. Anyway, um, that was Grumble Bumble. He's going off. And uh, anyway, <laughs> it's his history. Zippy suddenly turned up. But Violet, getting back to Violet, um, in I think I've got the I'll put the date down because um, somebody asked me once and I Rainbow's first program started the 16th of October 1972. Yeah, 1972. So and Violet was 50 years next year. Yes, it is. Yes, that's right. We're hopefully having a nice big celebration, but we might talk about that later. But anyway, the um, the it went out, but Violet made the original Zippy, which was a slightly smaller head, slightly worked slightly differently. And she did the voice of two other characters on the program, Mooney. Well, she did Mooney's voice and Sunshine was a puppeteer, not a puppeteer, I beg your pardon, the famous voice artist, um, Peter Hawkins, who was famous for the Bill and Ben voices and quite a lot of the Watch With Mother thing. But he was probably more famous for doing um, the Daleks voices, you know, originally. Um, and also he mm -hmm. did, oh, I know, Captain Pugwash, which was brilliant, the voices for that. So he was... Yes. A well-known voice artist by then. So obviously Pamela would go to the top person. And his zippy sort of voice was much sort of slower and very sort of like that. Anyway, that was fine. First two series went along. Oh, they had a different bungle there. He looked a bit different to the one that we all know and love. Um, Horrendous. Was, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Frightening, wasn't he? But he was a bit <laughs> horrific. If you see the early pictures, he was quite scary. Um, and in fact, John Leeson, who was the um, actor who was inside the original Bungle, said, has said that he said he often wondered, you know, how long that original one, although actually it changed, I think, in 1973. So it was only the first couple of series, the third series onwards, the new Bungle was there with Stanley Bates. And then I joined in on that series as well to work um, Zippy. Um, the long, it's a bit of a long story, but I'll try and shorten it. Um, basically, <laughs> Violet, shut up, you. Oh, sorry, <laughs> shut, shut up to Malcolm. He's my friend. No, anyway, no exactly. Was, I'm <laughs> wounded. <laughs> really? We've, we've known each other too long. Anyway, he's going to stop talking and I'm going to carry on talking. Anyway, the thing... <laughs> <laughs> the thing is that Violet Blesser um, did uh, injured her back. One of the sort of you know I don't know something in the back in the back of her went, and she had to lie on the floor. And she was doing these voices for the little Mooney. And in the end, I think Pamela thought, well, we can't carry on. We have to get somebody else in. So there was a, a young puppeteer called John Thirtle, and he took over the working of Zippy for a while. Other people, actually, I think Christopher Leith did a, a short time as well, but mm -hmm. I can't, you know, anyway, that was, John did the majority. And um, and then John, of course, got um, lots of other jobs 
um, in television and film. And one of the jobs was, which you all, everybody probably remember, was the, the series of Button Moon, which Ian, his partner, wrote. And um, John made all the puppets and stuff like that. So he was getting really busy doing all that sort of stuff. Again, for Thames, it was quite funny. Anyway, um, so he rang me up and said, Ronnie, would you be interested in taking over the Zippy character? And I said, oh, well, you know, who's, not, who's gonna turn a television job down? I thought six weeks, fantastic, because that was the length of the contract. So I went along, <coughs> had a work with Pamela, met uh, Jeffrey by that time, Stanley, and a lovely puppeteer called Valerie Heberden, who was at that time playing George. And I'd known Valerie at the Little Angel Theatre where I trained, because she was one of lovely. the puppeteers there. So, and she was an absolute gorgeous. Lovely person. girl. Really lovely. Uh, anyway, so, you know, I felt I got somebody I know there, even though I didn't know the rest of the cast. Um, and by that time, Roy Skelton had already joined the cast. I think he joined, he probably um, in 1972 at the end, because I think Peter Hawkins had decided that, oh, I don't know what the thing was, but he didn't carry on. And Roy took over, because as soon as the new, the, the Jeffrey joined, they had also George, and that's when George appeared. And that's John, I think John Thurtle designed George, the lovely Pink Kipper. And so, and he was a perfect foil for Zippy, of course. Mm. Um, and um, anyway, see him. I, yes, oh. please. Oh, there, there he is. He is. Oh, oh, oh hello. hello. Oh. Hey, everybody. My name's George. <laughs> oh, please. oh, it's so lovely to see him. <laughs> anyway, um, oh, it was gorgeous. Um, I then, anyway, I carried on working with um, Zippy. Valerie did. Um, uh, George and we had Stanley Bates doing Bungle and we had Jeffrey Hayes as presenter so it was a lovely team and we I did I think I mean we just carried on doing these series what happened was there was no retainer or anything like that we um, you know we finished the first series I thought well that's great I think I was all right I mean I did terrible things at the beginning you don't know what television's all about and I remember when the credits were going up once and we always the puppets always appeared at the window for ages I mean eventually we were allowed into the house I always thought that was terribly funny that people didn't want worry why the puppets were looking through outside window into <laughs> the set, loud, you know and we're sort of clinging on to <laughs> we need to have been five floors up five anyway. floors up <laughs> <laughs> anyway um what happened was that um I had done the, you know, the, Zippy had done a final sort of line or something rather. And of course they rolled the credits, but they were using the picture of the puppets there. And I don't, I don't know why I just, and I sort of thought, well, I've done the show. And I stood up in front of the credits as they were going up. Well, of course they I'm not allowed to be seen. So they went cut. And I thought, oh, what am I doing? Oh my God, oh, the credits go. So I sat down, <laughs> red face, and we, they just had to roll the credits. So that wasn't too bad. But um, I'm oh, lots of other things happened in in doing the shows, which we might go into a bit later on. But anyway, that we was might do a few thing. stories. <laughs> I mean, it always it got worse when Malcolm joined. But anyway, I was well. Yeah, well, <laughs> well I joined because because lovely Valerie uh, mm. was having a baby, yeah, wasn't she? That's right. And yeah. um, so I sort of came in thinking, like Ronnie, I'll do a series while she has the baby. Um, but she then decided she just wanted to be a mum, didn't she? And didn't, mm, didn't come back. And, and every series I kept thinking, she'll want to come back. She'll want to come back. Um, but bless her, she didn't. And then sadly, she got poorly mm. and passed away, didn't she? Yeah, which was lovely really Valerie. Hard. Yeah. Um, it's so, funny, yes, she's well, known as lovely Valerie. Everybody yes. in the crew always said, oh, it's lovely Valerie. So it's lovely to be thought of that. Yeah. Yes. And then once I joined, it did get a bit naughty, didn't it? Really, well, you I see, suppose. you can tell, can't you? I was a naughty influence. <laughs> he was, because we were all terribly serious about the whole, no, no, I mean, we weren't always that serious, but <laughs> Malcolm brought the humour out with the puppet yes. and, and the filth. Well, well, <laughs> well, there you are. You see, he said it, not me, but it's true. But, and, oh, we were very naughty. He, I saw a funny side in Mal well, well, I knew Malcolm anyway, so I knew he was going to be naughty. But we, it, it's terrible when you're doing a bedroom scene. I suppose we may as well talk about them. Well, but, yes, you know, we, we, we were not nine o'clock yeah, yet, boys. He's not forgotten. <laughs> But it would be, we'd be, the puppeteers are literally lying under the bed with a monitor and we're literally yes. lying with our hands up in the air and all you can see. Through a hole in the bed. Exactly, with a hole in the bed. <laughs> they, you know, you could have the 
the, the, you know, the heads of the puppets lying on the pillows and they'd sit up and they'd shout and we had blankets, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, so there we are. And of course, you know, there was all sorts of terrible things. <laughs> Sorry, I have to laugh. Sometimes Bungle would <laughs> Join or join in. Malcolm's face is making me laugh already because I know he's <laughs> thinking. And it was terrible. We'd do we'd say terrible things, but only obviously only in rehearsal because it obviously well, I think do you know what it was, Ronnie? I think it was because it was a kids' programme and we had to be mm. so well behaved mm. in our mm. private lives as well, in a way. Yeah. Um yeah. that you just had to be a bit naughty, just just yeah. Zippy and George simulating certain things was hysterical yeah. to oh. us. And the <laughs> camera guys absolutely loved it. You know, the thing is, I always think, too, that, you know, we were at a golden age of television, in a sense, you know, the 70s, 80s. There was Malcolm and Wise in Studio One. There was all the big variety shows. There was This Is Your Life in Studio Two, Sooty in Studio Two, and um, lots of other, all the quiz programmes and stuff. And then there was Studio Three, and we were this chitchy little studio in sort of at the end of sort of the studio at the end so, of the corridor, uh, next to the, car the, park. End of the corridor yes you know and and we were sort of children's and i always felt that perhaps the camera teams because there was a whole team of cameras camera operators they'd come in and think oh we've got to do rainbow oh it'll be mm. boring we all have to just point the camera at jeffrey point of you know camera at this puppets and just do it and then we have to look at the sort of boards when the stories are being read so it was a bit dull but we i mean but they loved make, it. They I loved mean, the audience. They knew that in camera houses we we would wouldn't be we they it'd be rude, but it'd be fun. It'll all be fun. Yes. Everybody loved, and they couldn't wait to get back to do Rainbow. And that was and it was great for the cast because everyone was really excited about getting the program, you know, as good as it possibly mm. could. And that was that was the thing. So yeah, but one. you know, I, I've heard. I will stop. Don't worry, I'll give Malcolm a chance. That there was, because um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, once I'm on, it's like a broken record. But the thing is, the the it's interesting. I've spoken to many other puppeteers because there were eventually after Rainbow Stuff, there was lots of other programs that you know for preschool programs, which became well known as well. And every puppeteer I've spoken to who have been on those have all said, "Well, we you, know, you we used to lark around as well. You 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 mm. did." Because you know, um, it, it kept the whole thing alive and and fun, and 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 you know, eventually, as as I say, the cast wrote the scripts too, so that it became more fun and and stuff. But anyway, I'll stop talking because I think it's time for Malcolm Lord to Ooh. continue the story. Well, were, were you allowed to ad lib at all or anything, or was it? Or were they very strict with the script? Oh no, the script was there, and it was timed to the second. Mm. Uh, we'd we'd have a read through on a Friday day and they time the script and go oh, it's a bit long it's a bit short whatever whatever then we'd rehearse a monday tuesday and they time it all again and it had got to last 14 minutes and 45 seconds and if it overran you see they, it would mean they'd lose an advert or something which would cost money let's have permission to overrun and so it would That's then right. be on the day and we keep saying it'll stretch more in the studio it'll stretch mm -hmm. and so then you come to do a take and it would be saying oh don't say those three words anymore just say those two words. and it was it was quite intense sometimes or, mm -hmm. or we're running short make something up or say something else you know? <laughs> Um, yeah. Stretch this out a bit. And um, it was quite interesting at the time because we we didn't I didn't well neither Malcolm and I voiced George or Zippy. It was Roy Skelton who came in, so mm. we were sort of lip syncing to Roy's voice, mm. and Roy was sitting live. What he was got, and he's live in the studio in his what we call his hole. If you don't mind, I'll just show you Ro Roy's hole. Have you got a picture Roy's of Roy's hole. hole? There is Roy's. I hope, can you all see that, everybody? There, there he, he is, is sitting in his hole. Yes, earphones on in his hole. And then over here, oh, there's Valerie, by the way. Oops, oh, there's oh, Valerie. You. There's lovely Valerie. See how gorgeous she was. And then moving this way, that is young Malcolm Lord. That's me. Um, Why sitting am on I his on the low floor? seat there. Oh, he's... yes, I can see. Because now. Yeah, you're working, George. Well, you're not working yes. there. You're having a rest. And we've got it. <laughs> I don't know. I've got, well, I've got a dippy up somewhere. But there you are. That's, that's sort of some rainbow pictures. But it gives you an idea. But anyway, yes, Roy, Roy was, um, you know, doing the, um, doing both voices. So we, we, we got used to lip syncing. I mean, it's, it's just a few more of, uh, I used to have a beard in those days and that was, oh, there's Zippy in the library. We used, you know, he appeared there I can see him, yeah. down the bottom. I think I opened a, oh, sorry. I never know which way I should go with these things. 
that's me opening with Zippy with a fate or something local listening to me. Oh, you are brilliant, all these technical people there. Can you all see those? That. I hope that's anyway. There you go. That's um so that gives you a little idea of what it sort of was like. But I'm gonna let Malcolm continue a little bit because you're gonna hear my voice too much if not. <laughs> <laughs> about what? You want me to carry on where you left off? Yeah. We were talking about we were talking about well, filth, we're, we're talking. um no, I, I will, I will say, I, I will just tell this one story uh, where I came as close as that to getting sacked. Um, mm, and I know we always remember story. the singers, Rod, Jane and Freddie, who were marvellous because yeah. they used to write a song yeah. about whatever the subject was. They'd write a song, perform it and whatever. But sometimes they'd need a few extras. And because Ronnie and I were out of sight, it would usually be one of us. So if you look at a lot of Ron, Roger and Freddie's songs, you'll suddenly see this strange person in it. It would be me or Ronnie. Anyway, this one <laughs> song was all about different jobs people do, uh, mums and dads. And uh, Rod was a baker, I think. Jane was a milkman and Freddie was a nurse. And they said, oh, well, we want, we want Jane to knock the door with a pint of milk, and then you in your pajamas and all sleepy, open the door and take the milk off her and, and give her the money and go. go. So I thought, oh, that's, that sounds like fun. So I went along to the wardrobe where we got a pair of pajamas and a dressing gown. And we thought, wouldn't it be fun if I could flash as Jane <laughs> opened the door? So we then cut the legs off the pajamas. So I had these like tubes and the tubes of the pyjamas were, were held up with a suspender belt and a pair of French knickers. <laughs> Do you remember, Ronnie? I'm blushing. And uh, so I've, I've got a feeling the director was in on it. Yes, I'm laughing. And, um, I, can, I, can, I can see it. <laughs> and um, so we started doing the, the <laughs> final dress rehearsal. And they said, oh, we'll, re we'll record it, because sometimes they'd record the rehearsal. And if it was good, it would be the actual take so jane's coming along going oh i'm a milkman i'm up early and all this knocked on the door i opened it and go Ooh, and went <laughs> and everybody fell about it was all good fun um but then when i look at that now of course i then closed it all up we did it properly but i often i think oh, you wouldn't know that man's got suspenders and French knickers on under that dresser gown anyway. But then I came out of the studio and there was the lovely Leslie Burgess, who was the producer at the time, yes, the walking up and down the corridor with steam yeah. coming out of her ear. And she's going like, you, my office now, sort of thing. I'm thinking, ooh. Um, and I think the trouble was she was she was in her office with some educational she people or something. Have a, she had and a she monitor, tuned into the studio she? live. Yeah, and, no. was, and she said, "Look at this she is had our the monitor in her office." Program. And she got these people in, yeah. and oh, these are the singers, and blah blah blah. And then suddenly, there's me going Whoa! <laughs> in the middle of this song. <laughs> so, um, oh, so that was yeah. that was a close well, shave, was, but she forgave yeah. me. She forgave it was me. Friday she evening did. confessions. Right. Yes, yes, Fr Friday evening <laughs> confessions. Yes, where the dog yes, was, this, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> But we did, we did lots no, of things uh, like Thomas Collins, didn't we? I mean, we, I remember yeah. their fast eating program, which is, is, it was quite funny. We were in a, sitting at a table holding the puppets, sort of like in one oh, hand, and right. we were, yeah. Do you remember Ordering that one? Ordering burgers we and stuff, at the yes. Table together. Yeah, and it was all, but, oh my God, chips, and but real chips, cold chips, burgers, <laughs> all been, it was, but here we were working the puppets, yeah, and I was stuck in a we lift. And we never got paid any extra model. for it, did we? Oh, no, 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 that's no, right. Well, well, there you go. You know, that's that's but the way what, it was. But, but I mean, well, it, what, it, <laughs> go on. I was going to say, it was a, 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 a golden age because I know oh. when I joined, I was like working for Violet on like equity minimum, yeah. which is like £50 a week. And suddenly you go from £50 a week to like £500 a week. And it's like, oh, what can I buy this week? <laughs> it was, it was uh, wonderful. Absolutely. It was it's the same for me, you know, as a puppeteer, even at the Little Angel, I think I was probably, uh, my, I think the final thing for oh, my wait, wages. Ronnie, they hadn't gone decimal then. then. No, they, they hadn't. hadn't it was like Hence, you're right. Yeah, it's shut up. You. But anyway, it was something like 20 <laughs> quid like a week. You know? And I, yes, oh, yes, I'd certainly charge my puppet shows in guineas, you know, 
and it was about eight guineas when I first started. I mean, ridiculous. <laughs> but um, no, no, I was, it was always expensive. expensive. You know, oh, it's so naughty. Do you see what I mean, Hayden? It's very yes, difficult. I know. You know. Well, at least but I didn't very... live overlooking a prison. <laughs> well, that was like my you first did. flat. I didn't have a lot of money, and I oh, it was wonderful. Can you believe it? Pentyville Prison on one side, the railway on the other. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a very nice flat in Highbury now. Not flat house. How dare I say such a thing? But uh, anyway, there you go. Well, I need Let to my... ask you because we're getting, we're getting lots and lots of questions in. All right. So, oh, right. okay. What you mean? People are watching this. <laughs> people are watching this. Marvelous. Um, we had a lovely question from uh, Katie Fraser, and she's asked, what was your favourite thing about working on the set? Oh, do you know, I never failed to get a thrill walking into the studio. Mm. It's funny that even after years, you think, oh, oh I'm here. I'm making a television programme. Um, that never went away. No, I, and I agree And seeing your name on the credits, it was like, oh, oh that's me. That was wonderful. I mean, my, my dear mum and my sister, you know, they'd watch the, when it, the very first one I did, they'd obviously turn it on to watch it. Um, and um, when they saw my name go up, oh yes. my goodness. I mean, people, it's just extraordinary. You know, they love it. I mean, I quite liked it. Oh, mm. they spelled my name right and they put it on the top or something like that. I mean, it was very, yes. it was lovely, I'm public tears. You know, but I um, remember being in a restaurant with my mum, and uh, the waitress was a bit cheeky about it. And my mum said, "Do you know who he is?" And I think, of course she doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> it must be great fun though working at Thames, as you said. You had Morecambe and Wise, yeah. Penny Hill, all, all mm. these amazing people back then. Um, well, yeah. And then, then you'd go for lunch, and you'd be sitting. You know, you're all sitting together in the canteen and stuff. Uh, it was oh, wonderful star spotting. Yeah, oh, absolutely. And I loved it. You know, there was all sorts of people. I mean, even I mean, even that I'd seen as a kid, like, you know, Huey Green doing Opportunity Knocks or something. Mm. He'd turn up, you know, as you say, Benny Hill, uh, the Morecambe and Wise, oh, Bruce, Ford, all of them, all the names would appear at some stage having lunch and I'd go, oh, look. Um, but we had some lovely guests on the programme reading stories. Yes. Um, didn't we? We've, we've, I mean, uh, one of the ones that we both liked, I know, was lovely. Patty Coombs, Pat, Pat Coombs. Pat Coombs. Remember her? Do you remember what Pat Coombs? Darling, lovely Pat oh, Coombs. Oh. We'd send her up rotten. Oh, we? we did, but she was she was so sweet. She never knew quite what to have for lunch because when we had the lunch done, it was so sweet. What should I have? I said, well, what do you like? Well, I like fish. You know, I said, let's have a look at have this. They got the fish? Yes, <laughs> exactly. She was really, oh, she was a darling, absolute sweetheart. But that comes and to mind. And she forget something. things. But remember when oh, she came yeah. in? Dressed as a fortune teller or something, yes. and yeah, I kept sure forgetting yeah. what she was to say. And then she'd leave, and she'd go, "Oh, I was supposed to leave this behind." And all it took a lot of takes, bless her. And the other I one, uh, <laughs> lovely uh, Patsy. Oh, uh, Patsy. Patsy was, it, was it Patsy Rowlands or something? Was Rowlands. Rowlands. She never it? got a rehearsal, Carry did on. she? We 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 sent her up rotten. Oh, but then we had posh people people. like like. Like oh. Patricia, Patricia Routledge and oh like yes, that, we did. We? Yes, indeed. Yes, and in my and day, Liz early Smith. on, we had Judy Dench and people, you know. But we also yes. had some people who were. It's very interesting who were actors and a fine used to work used to working with that other actors, looking at them and acting, blah blah. But they, this time, Pamela always said, "You've got to learn the story. You've got to look straight into camera." And some of them were absolutely terrified. Mm. You know, um, um, it was. Just, it just wasn't all, something they were good at also doing. They, they, they they were, sitting sitting next to the table that me and Ronnie were behind with, with George and Zippy. So that that and then they took and they go, What do you think? And you go, No, <laughs> talk to the puppet, not us. <laughs> <laughs> They'd be looking oh, under the table. Do you talk have to us. <laughs> talk to oh, us. I mean there was, a, there was a thing up all the time. Well, we used to have breaks when the camera were off, say close ups to Jeffrey. One could lean, and I—I I mean, one of the we used to do this. You know, I mean, I used to do zippy with it, and that was—I yeah. was resting my arm on the table. So, <laughs> although he was still alive, I was actually saving my arm yeah. from falling off. But just to get back about the voice, the the voices. I remember this, a, a floor manager coming up to us. You know, Malcolm was saying about looking down at the puppeteers, mm. and a floor manager would come, say, "Zippy, could you cut that line, please?" 
and I'd have to look up at the floor manager. It's you're talking to the wrong person. Well, I'm doing the puppet. Just, Roy's sitting in the his in hole the over there, and all this. And this or, happened quite a few times, so you know it was quite fun. Or we'd have photographers in oh, to God, do press yeah. calls and stuff, and then they we'd be behind something like this, and the photographer <laughs> would be saying, "Look at me, Zippy. Look at and we go. Oh. We can't see you. Where, where are you?" <laughs> That's, oh, that look that, this way. So <laughs> awful, awful. <laughs> but there you are. You know, that's the chore. But we, I mean, like Malcolm. You know, I, I had a six-week contract to begin with, and it went on for twenty years. So, can't really yeah. grumble, can we? Really. And we had a whale of a time. I mean, it was. And then fantastic. we went on to do various stage shows and nightclubs yeah. and goodness yeah. knows what. Oh my goodness! Um, yeah. <laughs> I went into. I went into, um, oh, what's it like doing the Rainbow Stage shows? Yeah. That was great. Was and, and, and Ronnie did a lot of the clubs as well. But oh, yeah. It was, it was lovely, actually, then meeting your audience um, live. It was, it, was, it was quite tricky because I was doing Bungle then. Um, mm. And, of course, in the studio, you do sort of what they call rehearse record. So you'd rehearse a bit put the bungle on do it so you might only be in it for a few minutes as you know if the scene went well so you never really got that hot but of course doing the stage show and you put it on you go on and do 20 minutes and you can't take the head off and you've had too much to drink the night before it's like oh god <laughs> i can't do this um but yeah. it was lovely meeting uh, the audience and of course because we were on telly for so long you've got the little is that were watching it at the time Plus then the 18, 20 year olds who watched it, who are now at university mm. uh, with a completely different fan base. That's right. Yeah, it was wonderful. And then we, when, when the programs are, we're jumping ahead now, but when the program sort of finished, we went on to do all these nightclubs and student union gigs. We did it for about three years, I think. So it was yeah. quite a long time. And we used to do about three nights a week. We, we had it was very nicely done. This is lovely Thames Deli or whatever, or Fremantle Media, I think. But it's the same mm. sort of thing. Anyway, they'd send a car for us, and we'd get yes, the car. Yes, but the funny thing up. was, they were blacked no, out cars. He was further away in London <laughs> because they were then. they were with celebrities, and it <laughs> and was like three of us, sort of. it's us. Yeah, it was lovely. And so we'd driven to the the club or the university, and we went to Oxford, Cambridge. Oh gosh, St Leicester. Andrews. All I can't even remember them. Every we even went to yes, we went to Scotland. We flew to Scotland. They flew us to Scotland. Mm -hmm. One of the gigs. I mean, just extraordinary. And we did have fun. We, I mean, again, that was like live shows. We they built a sort of stage for. Well, us. as you say, it's we fifty years walk. next year, and it yeah, and it's yeah. still going strong. I still do zippy. I on, had a one you know, funny experience. Oh well, yeah, it won't go oh, away. Well. I remember what, no, I was saying one of my funny experiences when uh, Bungle was in Panto and um, oh I was with um, John Inman. He was playing Dane and got a call from my agent saying John's not very well, but he thinks you should go on for him as, as Dane. And so we think, all oh, right. So we thought, well, if I go in and record Bungle, the ASM can put the Bungle suit on and do those bits and I'll do the Dane, mm. which which was fine. Um, I mean, it's that horrible moment when um, they announce to the audience that the star of the show isn't there, and all mm. you can hear is eighteen hundred people going, mm. Mm. Yeah. and you're going, "No, I don't want to do it." Look at my glasses flaring. Um, anyway, that was. Oh, that's lovely. Yes, they are flaring me out. There was a little scene with the dame and Bungle together. So suddenly, I was talking to myself. <laughs> <laughs> with uh, talking as Dame, but with my recorded voice coming back at me, and I I just said it all. I said everything. <laughs> just got totally tongue tied. But um, no, we had a few. Um, oh, I did a yes, Phil Norton. Oh, lovely Phil. Hello, Phil. I haven't spoken to you for years. Yes. What this? Throw a snowball directly into the centre of the lens. A little bit of a oh, lovely. A light a light there. Mark, the it, yes. I think it's going. Well, you're. You've yes, got to so it's a bit... back There you are. Oh, you've got to look up. My in the... flaring. Yeah. Well. The... Oh. Oh. That's a shot. What? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Wait, what, wait, gla wait. Has my glass eye come out? Uh, yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh dear. Oh dear. Yeah. Gosh, no, we're lots to... of friends are watching. This is great. Marvelous. Yes. We well, better get another talk... question from Hayden, haven't we? Really? Because we've ask... been whispering on. Well, something I wanted to ask you, boys. And I hope you don't mind me calling oh, you boys. Because oh, oh. you are 
so much fun and you're smiling and you're laughing and obviously <laughs> who were your influences comedy wise growing up Ooh. oh gosh well i loved i used to just i just had to look at tommy cooper and i would laugh he didn't have to mm. say anything and mm. i would just start laughing and seeing him in thames i had to go yeah. up and shake his hand i just thought yeah. and i just I'd probably look totally stupid saying, I've always thought you were wonderful. Can I shake your hand? And he had hands. His hands were like were like this big. And, you know, you went to shake this hand. He had enormous hands. But he could just stand there and go, ha, ha, ha. And that'd be it. I'd be gone. Um, he was great fun. What about you, well, Ronnie? I, I was very lucky. Well, Tommy Cooper, I mean, I was extremely, I did a, um, a, a little tiny bit of a, it was a magic ball thing. He came, one of the floor managers is, is again, because he was at Thames and he was doing his show and he said, I've got this magic ball and it's got, it's got on my head, it's got to go onto this hand, that hand. And I was behind in horrible green or blue, I think it was blue in those days, doing this pole going up to the, the different areas. Oh, in chroma and, But he, you know, had to rehearse this with Val actually Valerie was doing one, it came off, it disappeared up and then it came in from the side. So Valerie did that one. And um, we had to go to Kew Gardens to rehearse, and it was Dennis Kirkland, I think, was directing. Do you remember right, Dennis? Yeah. Well, yes. Anyway. Always wore but, pink. Anyway. Yeah, that's it. And, it, <laughs> and um, sorry, but Tommy didn't turn up for ages, bless him, because, you know, he, he was quite, didn't really like rehearsing all that much. And I can understand after meeting him. But his son was doing the stuff with us, which was sort of different, and his wife was sort of, Sitting in sort of waiting for him to turn up. Anyway, he turns up and goes, Oh, am I late? You know, and you think, Well, <laughs> yeah, we've, we've got three six done. He says, Oh, I don't really like that. And all this. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, I mean, he just, he walked, as Malcolm said, he walked in, this big man with his huge hands, big feet, and everything. And you just, <laughs> I don't know, you just laughed. He Love. was wonderful. I mean, he was lovely. And I remember when we fit, we did this thing for the telly and everything. Uh, it was sort of pre-recorded incident. And then afterwards, he's, oh, that was great. Hey, you two, I've got these chickens. Do you think you could come along? <laughs> and I just thought, what a lovely, lovely man. I don't, God knows what you're going to do with these rubber chickens. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, he was there by hangs and tail. <laughs> well, there you go. What about though, when you were little boys as well? I mean, obviously, you would have been watching a lot of TV back then. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm Bruce Forsyth. I, I used to look Bruce at Sunday Night London Palladium. And all those people, I used to like quite like the ventriloquist actually. Arthur yes. Worsley, I was just his son's on Facebook, and and I've you know I've he put a nice piece up. But Arthur Worsley was wonderful. Charlie Brown, oh, he's a naughty mm -hmm. boy. I, oh, I mean, brilliant. Yeah, um, my so, favourite was um, I don't know whether anybody even remembers him. Was Topo Gijo. Oh, that yeah. little that little mouse. The mouse. I don't know yeah. who worked him or anything. Well, it, it was, was a little Italian, Italian mouse. Yeah, it was Italian mouse, but a lady. I've forgotten her name. She just recently died, sadly, but there was a group of about three people. It was what we call black theatre. They had little yes. rods and, you know, to the, the head. The head, I think, was worked by hand, but there was three of them working. There. And I thought he was brilliant. He was always on the um, London or Sunday night London Palladium. Mm. And that's when I first saw him. None. Ronnie, do you remember One. when we, we used to do black theatre with, oh, with those grubs? We used to call it the Black Death. <laughs> the Black <because> Death. <laughs> <laughs> well, they we say, used to oh, these funny worms, we, didn't we? We had oh, these funny little right. grubs, and they'd yeah, say, grub, oh, we, can you, in, but we had, we, we, yeah, we had to invent do something, something that represents, with, that went uh, with the theme of the program. Planting a yeah. flower or something. Oh, gosh, yeah. And so we'd be dressed in black from head to toe. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Couldn't see a yeah. damn thing. Couldn't doing, even doing see this the monitor little thing. to do this stuff, because it was like <laughs> Couldn't see the monitor. And, and they lit us like mad, and they fade us, the puppeteers out somehow with the, in the, and everybody used to laugh because it used to go wrong because we couldn't see. It could always and go I, wrong. We it, couldn't it, see. It, terribly seriously. Malcolm was great because he was I always just like, oh. you know, he just laughed. But oh, they did naughty things oh, in rehearsal. They, I remember them tying it my shoes. They were very shoes happy. Up. They crawled under the table and somebody tied my shoelaces <laughs> up. Like, and I was going to go, and I was going, <laughs> I mean, you know, all the silly, silly <laughs> nonsense. But it was known as the Black Death. I mean, it was only 30 seconds, you can the imagine. But, yeah, I think that's well, what, yes. I think Stanley named it that, I'm sure. I'm, I'm pretty well, sure. something I mean, uh, we've, got, we've got somebody watching. We have got one person watching. Uh, oh, uh, Mr. David Burton. I don't know if you know that man. but uh, Oh, David Burton. Yes, yes. yes. Lovely David Burton. So it's not a question, but he was touring a few years back 
are needed to fix digs for Richmond. Yeah. I found someone on the paper digs list with the same surname as myself, Rod Burton, so booked oh. in with him. When it oh. when I arrived, it turned out to be Rod of Rod, Jane, and Freddie. Freddie. Many hours, happy, happy hours chatting with him about Rainbow. Yes. I mean, they were lovely, Rod, Jane, and Freddie. Oh, um, great. Well, they, they were wonderful. And Jane and oh, Freddie are married, and it's all very yeah, lovely. Yeah, But, of course, before that, it was Roger, really, wasn't it? Rod, Jane, and Roger. And uh, Roger Walker. Um, and before that, it was Rod, Jane, yeah, and Matthew. Uh, Matthew know, Corbett. They're, they're, yeah. I never knew that. Yeah. Yes, it was yeah. Roger Walker. And before that, it was Matthew Corbett. I just said that, yeah. Ronnie. Ronnie, I think we're losing you a moment. Um Hi. No. I'll tell you what we'll do. Um, sure. What we're going to do is we're going to... Um, um, little sooty. Ronnie, <laughs> Ronnie, <laughs> shut up. Uh, Ronnie. <laughs> Ronnie. Ronnie, completely. We're, we're going we're to reconnect with Ronnie, okay? So, Malcolm, you, yes. were, you mentioned about your friendship there with John Inman. Um, right, yes. To some of our younger... He's, there's some photos viewers. of him there on the wall behind me. Well, shall we explain who... John really was because there will be some younger viewers watching who will possibly only really know him from uh, are you being served as Mr Humphreys? Well, Mr Humphreys, yes, but he was actually a very a very fine actor, a very uh, brilliant character actor, um, and uh, he was the he was probably well certainly one of the greatest pantomime dames. Uh, I mean, there's a, there's lots of different ways people play dame in pantomime, and his, his was such a lovely, lovely dame, a sort of very motherly and and um, little old ladyish, very sweet. Uh, but what a person to work with, and who would always share. Uh, I remember once I was doing a play with him, and um, something or other happened, and, and I I ad libbed which is always a dangerous thing to do. I had lived and got a really big laugh and I thought, well, I'll be in trouble. Um, so that was that. And then the next night came, came to that point and he left a little gap and I just carried on. And he said, we came off. He said, you didn't say it, what you said last night. I said, well, I didn't like to. He said, no, he said, keep it in. It's a good line. It doesn't matter who gets the laughs as long as we get them. And that, That's that was very him. True. That was him. Or, I and mean, you do that. You do that with some people, and you'd you'd lose your job. Yes. Well, that that fateful night when when he was ill, and you ended up filling in for him. That must have been quite terrifying, wasn't it? Well, it was really. Um, <laughs> um, but he was very kind in that. Normally, as an understudy, you'd have because all his costumes were his own personal costumes so they didn't belong to the company so I was expecting someone to run down to M&S and get me a pleated skirt and a cardigan or something and then a message came through from him saying Malcolm must wear whatever he wants take over the dressing room and and I had all his stuff um to wear well so I was halfway there so to speak uh, I did four performances for him and it was such a lovely man and then Kudos who we were working for then kept kept us together um, for, for quite a few years in case he was ever ill again. And then it came to um, Richmond in 2004, I think it was, when he was taken ill in rehearsals. And um, it was a case of, well, well, will you open the show for me and, and I'll take over when I get back after the weekend. So that's what we did. But sadly, he never, he never came back and never did another panto. Um, so that's when I then became a panto dame. From from bungle bear to a panto dame, my career's been a wonderful accident. It's been great. Well, apparently we can bring Ronnie back in. Where's Ronnie? Ronnie, are you there? Ronnie? I'm here. Can you hear me? Uh, yes. Oh, there he hear. is. He's back. Oh, oh, there I am. I'm there. No technical I'm... Zoom problems. I think oh, was people it? Are... I just can I quickly show you another picture, but I just thought this is quite a fun one. Oh look here at oh, look at me. Look There's at the young three of Malcolm, us there. young Ronnie, and lovely Roy Skelton. That was the thousandth um, Rainbow program. The thousandth episode. This, the thousandth episode. So somebody, we we got a picture all taken together. 
There oh, you go. I just thought I'd show that because we were young once, weren't we, Mal? We were. <laughs> uh, yeah. So what about you then, Ronnie? What about performing on stage? I mean, you mentioned about the uh, the student union gigs. I mean, uh, and when you had people, you know, bad influences, you know, like like your compadre there. Um, mm. <laughs> what, what was it like being on stage to hear the children laugh? Oh, it's so wonderful. I actually, believe it or not, I never did the stage shows of Rainbow. Um, I The reason being, I didn't think somehow, and of course I, it, they proved me wrong, but I thought Zippy and George would be very, very different because of having to have somebody doing a voice, and usually it was recorded, so you had to sort of do it. And I thought on the live shows, it would be, you know, they're all shout out, Zippy, da, 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 da. And I, I wanted to do it live. You know, I felt that you have to respond to all that stuff and also mm. the other thing he's such a large puppet he's not small like um sooty where you can sort of hide hide the pup you know hide the puppeteer quite easily and stuff like that you off you go mm. sooty and um, so it was anyway i decided not to do those but we did do um all those wonderful um student union gigs and nightclubs and of course they were live and we by that time i was doing zippy's voice so we had the microphone on we had a gauze in front of us we took up the the puppet in front of the gauze and we just we just pretended that we were playing um 70s and 80s disco but we we started up with the puppets like with their backs to the audience and then they'd turn around and i can't tell you it's probably the nearest sort of feeling is it's like a pop concert or something all these students and there was sometimes oh hundreds of them you know they filled their union things and there's click 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 with their phones <laughs> And we go, and I, Zippy would turn around and say, hello, Oxford, you know, or something uh -huh. like that. You know, And they'd just go wild. And they loved it. And we'd play all these, as I say, sort of, it's raining men, hallelujah, you know, all these very old <laughs> sort of daft camp sort of songs. And they loved it. And and we used to have people coming to the dressing room afterwards, you know, for or they'd queue up for, you know, autographs. I think we've lost Ronnie oh, again. And I, I, I do say it in, but, um, well, uh, no, I think we've lost Ronnie again. Um, what we're going to do is gone again. He's, he's gone again. Honestly. No, sorry, your understudy's on now, Ronnie. <laughs> all right, fine. <laughs> Malcolm's used to that. I'm sorry, Jane, yeah. all you just showed us the book. Oh, yeah. Well, I was only going to show you the book because there's a, oh, I, there you are. Zippy and Me, it's out online and it, you can get it in bookshops now. I think you're allowed to go in and get get it. Lovely. still there. But it's is got it a lot the, of stories. In those, sorry. Is it, is it on the reduced counter yet? I might get one. Not maybe. yet, thank you, Malcolm. <laughs> no. Malcolm. Well, <laughs> no. Rory very he's, kindly he's, sent me a copy and I thoroughly I enjoyed did. reading it. Yes. Yeah, he's lovely. <laughs> no, and he's in it, of course. Malcolm's in it. Yes. There. All the not you know, enough, but I'm in it, yes. Well, yes, I, I, I had to save him just a few lines because obviously, you know, we have to sort of share. I've never been anyway. in a book. I've never been not? in a book. No. Oh, oh that's terrible. Should we put you in, in the second edition? I'll put Spoke to Hayden Parker. I'll Thank put you. that in. The greatest edition. interviewer on the planet. Absolutely. Like, yeah. Apart yeah, from so, Robert. Apart mention. from Robert, of course. Robert yeah, is, is yeah. the man. So, gentlemen... What was it like off screen? I mean, you you were on on screen for so long, but what about off screen? The the after party antics. Oh, well, I used to go home to my wife and my children <laughs> straight away. <laughs> yes, but, fire somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, but you know, it's so much we were never recognized. We were never recognized because you know we're not faces, or yeah. I certainly wasn't. So I could go home, nobody would know. Um, and that was really I always felt sorry sometimes for Jeffrey and for the singers, you know, that they were, you know, in the street. I mean, sadly, Jeffrey was a brilliant character actor, but you mm. know, after Rainbow finished directors and producers or whatever you know would say oh we no, can't you know they say oh look what about because they kept saying no. no people were i think he came They'll quite say, close to rainbow yeah Sorry. being a cat yes no but Go on. he he was he was lovely he was lovely mm, no i'm absolutely. just saying that the thing about not being recognized do you remember rod were you at rod's 40th birthday at, at yeah. Stringfellows? were you able yeah. to go oh, to that gosh, that was i mean funny, like yeah. well 
<laughs> yeah, but Ronnie and I, Ronnie and I could spill out onto the pavement, throwing up and whatever, and no one batted an eyelid. <laughs> <laughs> the others come out. It's not flash, 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 flash. <laughs> not that we did. Rated rainbow. I think I only had a bit of lemon that night. Exactly. <laughs> yes, I might have a bit of gin in mine, but um, anyway. <laughs> you've, got the big, you've got the big 50th coming up, mm -hmm. celebrating the rainbow. Do you think it could actually work in the context now of a new audience to watch Rainbow? If it would have um, a resurgence? It, I don't know whether television companies now would bother to want to make, I hate to say, I mean, I, I might be putting them, they, I don't think it would work in the, quite the same format, but you see they're still watching them all, all the old episodes, or some of them, on YouTube and, and all the social mm. media. Stuff. And there's plenty of social media um, like yeah. Facebook has got a whole lot of rainbow pages and stuff. Um, I don't know. Uh, I don't I mean, know the whether they are very afford it. I mean, everyone remembers them, the puppets and Jeffrey and the singers and everything. And we're often asked to, as individuals to go and appear on, on stuff. You know, I did The Last Leg not long ago, well, a couple of years ago, I think it was, with Zippy, because somebody had said that one of the presenters sounded like Zippy. So they phoned up Fremantle or whoever it was. It's called Boat Rocker now, the company that sort of look after Rainbow stuff. Because we, I personally don't own Zip. It's not my brand or Rainbow. I have mm -hmm. to sort of consult with the, the owners. And they say, yes, all right, you can do that or you can't do that or whatever. Anyway, um, and um, they loved it. I mean, the audience went mad. You know, yeah. they the puppet appeared and it was terribly uncomfortable because the, the set wasn't built for me, you know, for a puppeteer. It's for, a, it's a talk program, you know, and I'm lying on my back That's trying right. to look at the monitor and do the puppet was murder. But the presenters were just lovely. Is it Adrian Hills? He's wonderful. And all the Adam other Hill. people, Adam Hill, sorry, thank you. Yeah. I mean, absolutely fabulous. Mm. But yeah, he's done, I mean, we did Zippy Marmite. My mind, we were doing Rainbow when we did the Marmite, Dad. But we've done quite a lot of, you know, and loads yeah. of radios. They love Zippy on radio. Well, I went to uh, you couldn't you couldn't come, Ronnie, but I went over to Budapest to do a pizza. Yes, I'd commercial. love to have done that. Remember, yeah, you couldn't come. I know. Um, I was watching so the show. Yeah, it won't go away. It's no. really good. People still they. I mean, it's generations. It's twenty years. So there's all those generations who watched it, and they still remember it. I mean, I I just finished. I can't talk about it much, but I was working on quite a nice lovely film the last few months and um the crew and the actors and people they all went oh you weren't you weren't on that you weren't on rainbow and i said yes of course i mean they all went mad they all knew it not all the americans obviously but the english crew and oh it was it's lovely to know and i said well you know we have done a program for quite a few years but it's all you but know it's a kids program when they were kids they watched it they loved it and they'll never forget it. I mean, I remember Muffin the Mule in my youth and Watch with Mother and all those things. Um, I don't forget those. Uh, Sooty, sweep, you know, I was brought up with Harry Corbett doing it. Little oh. did I know I'd be working with Harry and, and his wife and Matthew and all the rest of it on Sooty and Sweep. So, yeah, and now with Richard Goodell, you know, who's taken over the, yeah. the works of Sooty and everything. So, yeah, no, it's wonderful. Anyway, well, Malcolm, can... you can chat now because I'm going to let No, you. no, I was just saying I can't, I can't see anybody ever remaking it, really. No. I, th I think it would probably cost too much as well. Well, this is it. The budgets uh, now are very different, aren't they? You know, um, but, you know, I still think that you could, a lot of those programmes, you could just put them out again. Mm -hmm. Okay, you might think... Roger and Freddie and Jeffrey are wearing a few dated clothes, but it, I think they would still stand. Just, just mm. put mm. a child in front of it. Yeah, um, well, they're still popular. People watch them now. The kids, you know, yeah. on the on the, on the um, social media, whatever YouTube and all that. And every and there was somebody on the Facebook page puts a program on every day. I don't know yes, where. I don't know where they from. get them from. I don't know where they get them from. I mean, they, <laughs> they, it's extraordinary, and they go right through all the years. You know, they. And every yeah. day there's another new one, you know, or, a, you know, I know we did over a thousand programs, so I suppose it's quite well a lot over. of students. So, uh -huh. um, yeah. Well, I know, there's an, I know there's an appetite at the moment because I interviewed Richard Cadell a little while ago. For oh, yeah. oh right, Richard. yes. And there, there's a film in the works. There is indeed, which, yeah. Um, it's very exciting and... Do you think there could ever be a sort of a, a bit of a tongue-in-cheek rainbow movie? Ooh. Wouldn't it be nice? Who knows? 
we just don't know. I mean, you just don't know. Uh, it's a bit tricky because, you see, Red owns Sooty and the whole thing. So he's he can sort of promote and do. We uh, we were performers on the programme, which the programme is now owned by a company called Boat Rocker, which is affiliated to Fremantle. Mm. And they would have the last say, and they're very protective over what they've got because stuff is being sold still. I mean, the DVDs are still being sold, cups and T-shirts and God mm. knows what. You know, all sorts of stuff is still actually being sold. So I think they're quite they quite like to keep they're it very protective of the brand. Very protective of it. And, I, and of course they don't they don't have to use us. They can no, get anyone to no, do it. Exactly. They don't exactly. have to use us. No. Um well I hope they will. Oh well, so do if I. We're still I alive. should be terribly <laughs> mortally upset if I wasn't used. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine you both in Hollywood, you know, sharing Yeah, well, absolutely. Oh absolutely. Yes. <laughs> Phone rings will be there, no problem. You know. We'll be <laughs> there. there. We've got my airfare play, you know, paid he's, for. But, uh, well, well, let's, he's let's here, hope. look, he's ready. Oh, yeah, Bungle's oh, there, look. He's there, no. he's pushing me out of the way. Go away, Bungle. Oh, it's too big. big. And there's he's Little Sippy big. there. Oh, hello, it's Little Me. <laughs> yeah. And uh, by the way, people used to say, where's the Zippy's feet? And I say, well, he chose not to show them. But yes, now he today, has got them. He has got them. You say, oh, there very well. Are. He's got look. lots of lovely oh. feet. Or two, anyway. Well, here we go. I've, I've not got it in the camera properly. Uh, I've got a quick question for you, okay? This is from Harry Stedman. Okay, this is from Malcolm. Right. What was the hardest bit about being Bungle and any tip for anyone wanting to get into costume character performing? Ooh. Any tips? Uh, don't wear much underneath. <laughs> <laughs> it gets very hot. Uh, I think the thing is, with in a costume character, you've got to remember that um, you've got no facial expression. Mm. So, what what you do with your body and your head, it's got to be very, very big. Do you know what I mean? You you can't. I mean, I can go, and you'll go. Oh, he looks sad. But what do you do when you've got a head on? Do you you've then got to, but you've got to exaggerate it and make it even bigger, mm. um, and to practice. And the other trouble with being a costume character is that often you don't get the costume till like the dress rehearsal. So you've you've happily been rehearsing, walking around all over the place, and suddenly you can put this thing over your head. You can't see a thing. You're falling over the stairs. You're bumping into things. Um, so I, I sort of decided the best thing to do is to uh, rehearse with a hoodie on back to front. <laughs> then you can't see. Um, but we've had I've had some funny incidents when because often. Uh, like Ronnie, they say, can Bungle come and do something or come and mm -hmm. do this? And I remember uh, going back to the merchandise, um, we were asked, uh, I was asked if I would go help promote these T-shirts or whatever it was. Mm -hmm. And of course you say, well, I don't actually arrive as Bungle, so I will need somewhere to change. And, oh, <laughs> yes, we'll, we'll sort all that out. So of course I get to this place in Excel and uh, with this big suitcase with Bungle in and uh, I said, right, wh where do I change? Oh, yeah. oh, you, you think, well, I can't just change here. So yeah. suddenly you have this, you have this sight of this little old man with a big suitcase disappearing into the public lavatories. <laughs> <laughs> and then 10 minutes later, Bungle walks out carrying a suitcase. <laughs> uh, do you remember but, we uh, did a shop thing, Malcolm? I think it was HMV in Oxford Street or something. Oh, and yeah. they, the same thing happened. You had to get changed and there was nowhere. And that we went to change. a stock room or something with just a curtain across. And you right. needed, and Malcolm, I mean, can I tell him what you wear under? I mean, you do have, Malcolm's not fat at all, but Bundle no. is quite chubby. So Malcolm wore this amazing, what we call a tutu thing. It was just pushed out his tummy and his legs and arms and all Big that. Sort of and so, but he had to get in, into that thing first. And then it was like Velcro behind. So he, you couldn't, he couldn't do it himself. So he needed somebody to, so I, so in this stock, I mean, it was ridiculous. Oh. Stock, da, 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 doing him all, then he put the costume on, they got the head on. He couldn't walk about the shop without the head on. He was <laughs> so and we were about it. two floors away. And <laughs> so I had to lead, but I, I mean, nobody knew who I was. I was leading Bungle Bear through this shop all, and all the, uh, full of shoppers. And, but Malcolm, being Malcolm, would suddenly go, oh, hello, and start talking. I say, Malcolm, we've got to carry <laughs> Wandering off, he was so naughty, but it was so, so funny. I mean, for me. A, I, made, I made a woman empty her handbag, didn't you I? You did a handbag. You did something. <laughs> what, what she, she been buying? A bag or something. I'm going, and oh, then, 
that time when we were in Hamleys. Yeah, yeah. Promote, oh, uh, when the, yes. the new rainbow toys had just come out, so they'd all got these yeah. bungle zippers and Georgies. And we were placed in this bit, and we just did oh, this bit yeah. where I picked up a little bungle and said to the boys and girls, "What? Well, you know, I'm going to put him here. If anybody touches it, you you let me know. Oh, yeah. If anybody touches my bungle, and I sort of disappeared. <laughs> of course, Zippy would come up and touch it, and they'd all shout. Yeah. We did all this. Yeah. We did but all because that, it yeah. was so crammed, they said, we'll put you in this mm. slightly bigger space. So they moved us to this bigger space for the next one. And of course, I then went to get a bump. And of course, they were way over there. <laughs> and all that was there were noddies. Do you remember? And so I just picked up Noddy. And of course, I put this thing down. I said, and I said, now, boys and girls, if anybody touches my Noddy, it was, that was it. I'd gone. <laughs> remember? Oh, God. Yeah. And then yes, you I simply came up. And then they're shouting, he's touching your Noddy. He's touching your <laughs> Noddy. It was like, oh. Oh, Hamley. there you go. So, Malcolm, uh, yes. have you thought about oh, writing? Sorry. Have you thought Pardon? about writing? Malcolm, Malcolm, hello, Malcolm. <laughs> have you thought about writing um, a book? Oh, I don't think. I I think I'm. Yes, I'm listening. Have I ever thought have of you... writing a book? Yes. Was that the question? Yes, it was. Right. I haven't actually, <laughs> because you you always sort of think, and Ronnie probably felt the same, thinking, well, nobody would want to mm. read it. Did you think well, that, Ronnie? With yeah, your, you said, well, will anybody well, want yeah, to read I it? Because, well, well, exactly. And the thing was, it wasn't my idea to write the book. The authors, lovely Duncan and Nuda, came to me. I was performing again at the, the Little Angel or something. They came and said, oh, can we have coffee with you? We're thinking of writing a book. We'd love to write a book about your life. And we can mm -hmm. call it Zippy and me because, you know, Zippy's a really well-known yeah. character, blah, blah, blah. And I said, well, nobody wants to read about me because I'm not famous enough. Oh, well, the name Zippy, they'll buy it. And well, I mean, as it turned out, they put it to various publishers to begin with, and about five of them turned it down. I mean, it, it, this was about well, five years. Would. Reading this. Well, they would, because they thought, oh no, it's disgusting. The <laughs> writing, the spelling, it's brilliant. It's all, it's all spelled right. I mean, if it was me, I wouldn't know where to start. But because see, I witter on for England, and I was wittering on, they were busily writing stuff down. And checking on the dates and all that stuff, which I can't remember. Anyway, I'm going to put this down. But um, and it wasn't until we got a crowdfunding publisher that said, "Oh no, this would be great." And we, it took 18 months for people to donate their 10 quid or whatever it was to buy the book, and then it was all gone. But I mean, I did. Gosh, talk about radios. As soon as it was published in July, the July two July 2019, um, the it it's just it. Well, it it was taking off like mad you know people were buying all over the place which was great for me and then of course all the radios and telly mm. i did a couple of tellies i did all sorts of radios i spent two days at the bbc you know i think it's wogan house they call it now and you sit in the little booth and talk to that's right BBC bedford bbc suffolk bbc blah 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 and i went all over the country or, or they you know came in from all over the country and i was doing a five minute intro selling the book so there you go. It, it was, it, it's, as I say, it's go, Well, uh, maybe I need that because I. Yeah, you should do it. I wouldn't have the discipline to sit there and type it. No. I, well, I'd try run and get out of a, paper anyway. A, a ghostwriter or somebody, or somebody to do all that bit. You might, that well, might be good. Well, you'll I be like, so oh. <laughs> what about Hayden Parker? Would he write it for mm? you? Be, you know, is, as, as well, he might. Hayden Parker. I'm writing my own book at the moment, actually, not about me, but about comedy. Oh, so, lovely. Oh, well. Well, we're included in that, aren't oh. we? Of course. We're in, we'll we'll I want to know what that. it's called. Actually, this, <laughs> yes, might, well, this might be something that we can actually discuss as well. Um, it's called... Oh, are, are they there? They're there. Um, it's called Why Women Aren't Funny, with a little Ooh. asterisk, with a little asterisk underneath, which says, well, that got your attention, didn't it? And well, it's to yeah, find no. out, Very is good. comedy a primarily a male thing and it's to dispel the myth that comedy is uh, somehow dominated by men and mm. it's a, an exploration of why men are funny why men mm. have to be funny and it basically boils down to the fact that we're all children that haven't mm. grown up but yeah. you mentioned about um female puppeteers well, yes. as well and was there any sort of was it male dominated back then um, well, there were lots of husband and wife teams that, you know, when sort of mm. with their small companies, they would do it together. 
But I, as far as television was concerned, early days, it was actually, well, in fact, the very early days, the, the well, Muffin the Mule was Annette Mills and Anne Hogarth. Yeah. She was working the puppets and Annette was playing it. So it started off with sort of women. I mean, the children's television was always the, the sort of, were, were, I mean, Myra Bird and Frieda Lindstrom, they, they set up and yes. watched his mother. And they, you know, looked after it. Blue Peter, all those programs, those, you know, that period was Biddy Baxter years ago. She was the editor and she was running it. I think it was it was felt that the men well let the women do that they can do that they can't do all yes. that serious it's, stuff. It's for children, yes. Yeah, exactly. So they can cope with that. They have them. They might know what to do with them, make them laugh. I mean, I God knows what they thought, but that was the sort of thing. Um, but talking of comedians, I mean Victoria Wood. I mean, well, gorgeous. yes. I mean, she was isn't she it's very fantastic? Funny. I loved her. So there but, are there are women, aren't they? I mean, there are a lot of women. I mean, women. Yeah. Yeah. Women actresses, such as one of my favourite, Joyce Grenfell or yes. Irene, oh, Handel. Um, Irene Handel. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Irene Handel. Molly Sugden, of course. Oh, oh wonderful. Yeah. I mean, Molly had funny bones. That's the thing yes. with her. Yeah. But, well, I think um, Bobby Ball, Bobby Ball, who I've worked with quite a lot recently, who sadly died last year, mm -hmm. he used to say to me, there's a difference between a comedian and a comic. A mm. comedian tells jokes. A comic is a funny person. Yeah, mm. and that that's that's the difference. And if you've got funny bones, um, but it's the same um, when you think about it. The pantomime dame. Mm. There are very few women who could get away with playing a pantomime dame. Very few, because it's that it's just that little bit too um, naughty, isn't it, I suppose? And for a woman to sort of fall over and show a knickers, it would be a bit, ooh. Mm. But people like Molly Sugden could have got away with it, I'm sure. Mm. Well, mm. well, the thing I've found is that if a little old man falls over, we find it funny. If he falls over yes. and falls on his bum, it's funny. But then if a woman does that, yes, it's instantly go, oh, is she all right? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And, and it's just it's a woman, time. isn't it? Yeah. It's, it's mm. with, you know, without being sexist or anything like this at all, but we all love our mums and we yeah. wouldn't want to see anything happen to our mums. Our dad, oh, dad fell off a ladder. It, yeah, <laughs> that's uh -huh. You know, uh, <laughs> yeah. but yeah. that's it. It's, and I think John Sullivan actually, uh, Only Fools and Horses, when Leonard Pierce died, mm. um, and mm. he was looking at replacing him with. Uh, an auntie, right. and he said, "There's nothing funny about bundling a little old lady into the back of a three-wheel van." Mm. And when you no. think of it that way, it does make you go, mm, "Yeah, it wouldn't be funny, would it?" But, uh, mm -hmm. but what's next for you two gents, anyway? Um, um, well, I'll, I'll, I'm going off to Nottingham, the Nottingham Puppet Festival, to do a talk, and and they're going to show Labyrinth because you know I did a lot of Muppet stuff as well, apart from all the the zippy stuff and so that it, all these things were all cancelled i also do well, quite yeah. a lot of comic cons can you believe and they were a lot of those were cancelled because of covid of course mm -hmm. and now they're coming up again so i've got about three comic cons lined up i've got a tour in september well october for the little angel and uh, a lovely puppeteer called peter o'rourke the dong with the illuminous nose so i'm touring around <laughs> theaters in in october rehearsing in september but June is when I'm doing my um, the uh, Nottingham Puppet Festival, and I've got lots of these podcasts. They're wonderful. I mean, I, well, yeah. I, I today I was doing um, a thing for a student in the morning, you know, uh, a, a little something he's written, and I was doing two puppets, and he was filming it um, in my living room. I mean, you know, it's <laughs> extraordinary. But um, yeah, there's lots of lots of stuff like that, and I'm president of the British Puppet and Model Theatre Guild, so I. I did an AGM. We had an AGM the other day. I had two puppeteers who are now popular on television. You know, Hacker the Dog and and right. Dodge, Dodge and Warwick and Phil were on, and I was interviewing them. So that was that was fun. Um, so yeah, there's lots of small things, but well, the tour is yeah. quite long. It's a month's work, and goodness knows what Christmas. Let's hope I can do. I mean, I'd love to do another panto. I did one in years ago. Now it was a theatre role with theatre role Windsor with lovely Bernie Clifton who. Is a gem, and of course, I watch Bernie every oh, Sunday right, yes. evening. Go, oh, he's so funny, he's just lovely, and you know, he's brilliant because you know, you type in the chat, and he's oh, that's that Ronnie LeDrew on his tiptoes again, or something like that. You know, he's terribly sweet. <laughs> he was 85 last week, so anyway, he's he's a gem, he's lovely to work with. So, um, yeah, so yeah, I keep busy, um, and 
doing these mm -hmm. things. Oh, I don't know, writing stuff, teaching when I can. I've done a lot of online teaching, not quite the same, but people keep mm -hmm. asking me, can you do something? And I try and do a marionette online. It's like, no, you've got to come to my house. <laughs> COVID is nearly over, we hope. We hope. Um, yeah, I know. We've got this, all this Italian, not Italian, the Indian thing. I'm a bit worried. <laughs> I hope it doesn't. Sorry, I, it's nearly the same. But <laughs> <laughs> he makes you laugh. Hayden, I'm very sorry. I can't. If I didn't see his picture, I would look at him. Look, he sees giggles and it sends me up. Anyway, there you go. It's his turn now. He's great. He can't to talk now. He's Ron, Ronnie is a bit like Hilda Baker. He does get his words wrong now and again. I do. Yes. Um, <laughs> I'll take the glasses off. It'll be better. No, go on. Oh, no, there's another question it's come up. A question. Yeah. Do you both have a highlight oh, working on the series? That's Ooh. Warwick Brown. Lovely it's Warwick, who I've sorted. Oh, Hi, name. Warwick. Um, <laughs> very a highlight. Wow. Oh, dear. Oh, gosh. So um, many, so I, many. Well, I had one, I suppose, a highlight was meeting the Queen. Uh, we had mm -hmm. the greatest children's party. It was a, sadly, it was before Malcolm joined. We were all at Hyde Park. Yes. And Queen arrived in her sort of, you know, Land Rover or whatever, with Prince Philip behind. And she got out. She wasn't allowed in the tent because it was during the time of the... I, IRA bombers, so we had to everything had to be out in the open. Luckily, it was a gorgeous day. There was Jeffrey, there was the singers, there was myself and John Thurtle, who was doing George at that time. And we stood in a row, and she came across. But that we had this competition for a picture of the Queen that a little kid would would um, paint, and we chose. When I say we, the production company chose a picture of a black Queen. Can you believe? Thing. and Jeffrey had the little boy turned up he was terribly shy and you know didn't want him because it was cameras and god knows what and photographers anyway here you are your majesty Jeffrey sort of gave the queen and the queen looked at it and, went, and gave it like she does you know she oh, and gave it straight to the um lady in waiting and Duke of Edinburgh who was really lovely I mean very funny walked past and as he walked past he said Dar and, and we could hear it but it wasn't broadcast he said darling I think you'll have to change your makeup and if you see the recording <laughs> of that, it's so funny because you hear, you hear us all go, Whoa! <laughs> the whole oh, and it. nobody wonders, you know, people must wonder, why are they suddenly laughing? Well, it was what lovely Prince Philip, bless him, who had said that lovely comment, which was, but I mean, my goodness, it was the most scary thing because she's amazing. Um, that literally about six feet away were all these press men clicking away and there's like a fence to stop them for, but it's a, it could have easily stamped, you know, and she's there completely doing her thing. Just floating, I mean, floating away. Yeah, exactly. What I think about my you then, job to do it. I'd be terrified of those people. A highlight. That was a highlight for me. Meeting the Queen. Working um, with me, wasn't it? <clears throat> working with Ronnie, yes, yes. Um, oh, yes. Yeah, so, do you know, the whole thing was such a highlight. I can't think of one single thing that makes me go, oh, that was wonderful. Um, I could just keep thinking of funny things. Do you remember when um, it was the 10th anniversary, Ronnie, and we were doing this press call, and I thought I was going to a 10th birthday party for Rainbow, remember? And yes. we were, it was at London Zoo. <laughs> oh, London I, Zoo. Oh, that was I fun. thought I'd better go smart. Yeah. And I, I bought at great expense this beautiful grey mm. silk suit. It was lovely, yeah. It was lovely suit. We got there, and then <laughs> they said they brought on this little baby elephant. Yeah. And uh, they got George and Zippy. They said, we want to take a picture with George and Zippy and, and the elephant. Wasn't of course, this was only Mark. a baby elephant. So then the first cameraman said, well, could you lie on the floor, please, yeah. next to the elephant? I went, oh, All the muddy, floor. muddy, you know, <laughs> terrible mud on the floor. This one, oh, can't possibly oh. do that, you know. No, no, and no, 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 no. He took his Mac off, I think, and laid it yeah, down. It this. Well, it was Walter Raleigh thought, or whoever it was. He yes. put it down so you could kneel down and do the party. I thought yeah, I thought I was going to a party, and there we were. And Jane had to get on the elephant. She did. She sat on it, didn't she? And was waving. And she got a very short skirt, and the elephant's yeah. back was very hairy and bristly. <laughs> <laughs> she oh, had chafed, oh, happy days! Thighs. Mm. Bless her. So Malcolm, um, oh, what, I, I can't think of an individual highlight because. It was all one. Yeah. Well, Malcolm, what's coming mm -hmm. up next for you then? 
Right. Uh, well, I was talking to my agent yesterday about pantomime, which, fingers crossed, hopefully will go ahead this year. Um, I'm contracted to be in crew. Uh, but then he was talking about other places as well. So I may be moved. I don't know, because obviously I was contracted to be there with Bobby and Tommy uh, mm. for the fifth year. So <clears throat> but I, I like crew. I hope I'm back there. But in the immediate future, during the all this lockdown, my local theatre group, asked me to get involved. They've been doing lots of um, virtual stuff and um, radio type plays, which which I've helped edit and things. And they wanted to do Toad of Toad Hall. So they wanted it sort of panto for Christmas. So I wrote all that up and then I was persuaded to be the washerwoman um, in it. So that was all recorded and it's on our YouTube page. Now, the great, the great burgers of Oswestry, where I live, have suddenly decided, wouldn't it be wonderful if we could do an open air version of this in the summer in the park? So we're going to be doing Toad of Toad Hall in July and August in the park um, with me playing the washerwoman, of course, dressing up as a woman. <laughs> so we're going to start putting that together in the next few weeks, um, which, which should be fun. Mm. Um, don't think COVID will stop it because we are out, out of doors. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, unfortunately, I wrote I wrote in the uh, panto thing, a strip routine for the washerwoman when she takes her clothes off to give to Toad. So I've got that up there. So I'm going to be stripping twice daily in Oswestry Street Park if anybody wants to come along you, and watch. You look so proud of yourself when you say yes, that. Yes, well. <laughs> It's Ronnie, a very funny routine. It's a very yes. funny routine. I've seen Mal. You do it in the start of John. Yes, yes, it's John. It's John Strip outfit, um, which, um, which which is just wonderful. You start off with this big long coat that comes off, then various blouses, and you then have this under sort of like pink leotard with a basque here, and then you have two balloons with water in. I mean, they just look mm -hmm. like real boobies, um, <laughs> especially if you put the knots of the balloons at the front, and the kids just <laughs> scream when they're jigging about. And then, of course, you unwind all this washing line that goes right across the stage. Mm. And then you're left with um, these pairs of bloomers that whip off one after the other. And they've all got the ones I've got now. Uh, I've got traffic signs on. So it's things okay. like no entry, give way, uh, <laughs> you sort of pass either side all on the back. And then the final pair have got these two big eyes. And on the last beat, this one eye, you bend over and it, and it winks. Um, actually, I had a disaster with that once a few years ago at Crew. Um, a friend of mine was sitting in the dress room, nattering. He'd seen the matinee and was watching the evening. And we were chatting and the dresser was getting me into this strip. And um, the uh, executive, the, the big boss, Nick Thomas of Kudos, was in. And I went on to do the strip and doing it. And suddenly I thought, I haven't got any knickers on. <laughs> I haven't put the knickers on. So of course we get to the end of the washing line and that's it. I've got nothing, I've got nothing on. <laughs> nothing else to take off. And there's a break in the music. So and I was like looking at the MD to going, God, God, leave it there. That's the end of it. But no, he didn't look up. So da da. So then I have was like running around the stage for another minute with nothing to take off, jigging my boobs up and down. Oh, that was embarrassing. Oh, <laughs> What about you then, Ronnie? I mean, is local theatre and live entertainment important to you? Oh, absolutely. I mean, there isn't. I mean, I love it. I go, I visit it, even if I'm not always in it. Um, mm. We've got, I mean, Islington's got lots of theatre, you know, Sadler's Wells around the corner, and we've got lots of pub theatre and stuff. So I do visit that one when we can. And, um, and if ever I get asked to do it, I suppose The Little Angel is my local puppet theatre. You know, it's 20 minutes up the road. And I do do lots there. I do, as I say, I've been doing teaching online, but I'm doing, you know, I've always been performing um, in their shows I mean, ever since I was 15, really. So I have You're really stage stopped. struck, aren't you, Ronnie? You're stage I am struck. stage struck. I love it, you know. So <laughs> we both are. I mean, even Malcolm is stage struck. Oh, but... well, I should, be, I should be struck off. I know that much. No, not at all. <laughs> all but yeah no i mean as i say i've got the tour coming up i mean that's the next the next sort of theater um show which i'm really looking forward to i love touring it's great and go you know we're going i think we start at theater cluid i think first. you won't get in hayden you won't get in won't. <laughs> oh sorry you're waiting to get in oh no, no, I'm just gonna say, the hands of both of you 
the, the one thing that both of you haven't said that you've got lined up is uh, <coughs> you, oh. you're going to be catching on the podcast. Oh, yes. Oh, as yes. Soon as, as soon as yes, I get I down wait. to yourselves. Yeah, that would be lovely. Really look forward to it. I'm back on the road now and I'm raring to go and I've got nine in the bag already. So, right. so we might have another ten then. <laughs> you might Ronnie, another, well, you I, can, yeah. Ronnie, are oh. you not surprised it's taken him so long to get round to us two? Well, I was, but I didn't like to say, actually, oh, Mark, I was going to tell you afterwards. I don't know why, because he knows us really well. I mean, I we're, 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 like, we're so legends, long. aren't we? I know. I mean, he's got all those I'm... other people. But... <laughs> oh, you're, you're in for some treats this series, I, I'll tell you that. But I'm going to keep going for as long as I can, because now we're oh. allowed to travel everywhere. And can we have so, a mug, please, yeah. for doing yeah, every, it? All oh, the you guests. get a mug for doing it. Oh, all the guests get a mug. Oh, that's <laughs> lovely. Yeah. Oh, fabulous. Oh, Marvellous. Oh, I love that. Lovely. Drink up. Mm. Yeah, no, everybody. It needs it's behind you written on the bottom, doesn't oh, it? Oh, yes. that's perfect. It does. Yeah, no, that's lovely. Gosh. Right then. Well, I'm going to say thank you so much to both of you for taking that. Also, a big get well oh. soon to Robert. Yes, please. Yeah. Um, get well, and, Robert. Yeah, get yes, well. he's back next week with a West End cast reunion. Ooh. Oh, we're back in again, Ronnie. Yeah, West End. <laughs> <isn't> <laughs> on. That's not, well, I'll put a flashy clothes on. I mean, I'm just... You remember, do, have you forgot when George and Zippy were in Le Miserable? We were marvellous. Absolutely. Yes, I, wasn't it <laughs> wonderful? Yes, it was quite a short run for us. Wasn't yes. it? Wouldn't it be good then to in Phantom just popping oh, up? As, uh, just popping wonderful. up. Wonderful. Oh, yeah. how lovely, yes. And that chandelier, Zippy swinging on the chandelier. Oh, I mean, wow. <laughs> <laughs> on the boat, Excellent. honestly. Well, gents, thank you so much for spending the time. Pleasure. Chatting away. Absolute and pleasure. I'll see you for the podcast. Will lovely. do. Excellent. And, thank you very much. Well, just put your name well. to people remember. Yes, don't worry. It's on Amazon. <laughs> oh, oh, you're it's lovely tons people. Tons of great reviews as well. Right, and thank you so much. And I'm, oh, thank you. I'd just like to say thank you as well for Robert for asking me. Get well soon, Robert. And watch out for next week um, because there's going to be a Rambles competition where you can win a £30 Just Eat voucher and a special Rambles goodie bag. So for me, Hayden Parker, thanks very much and take care and I'll see you very soon. Ta-da! Yeah. <laughs>